Scotland-based landscape photographer Colin Pryor has been taking pictures for more than 30 years. He made his name shooting panoramic images of Scotland's mountains and wilderness areas and also travelled widely shooting for clients such as British Airways. He continues to be inspired by the natural world. I visited him in his studio just outside of Glasgow to discuss his work. Hi Colin, thank you for um, inviting us here today. We're going to talk about three of your images, go into a bit of detail about the story behind them and I understand that each of them kind of marks a particular point in your photographic career. So this is quite an important one, I think. So perhaps tell us a bit about it, where it was taken and how it came about. Well, this was the first big image that I shot with the 617 format. Um, it was a really important moment in my photographic career, this, because when this light eventually appeared, uh, it uh, illuminated the landscape like a giant theatre lamp. I've never ever witnessed light like that um, again. But it, it was also an important moment for me because when I left that mountain, I'd made my mind up what was important in photography and right. what was trivial. And it was the beginning of a new and exciting journey where I organised my life into a way that allowed me to go and do this on, yeah. a, on a regular basis. So what, when you talk about you'd made that decision about what was important, what was trivial. What, so what was important? What kind of was the thing that came out of it for you? Well, just really to be there as the sole witness of these events. Um, no one else saw that that evening. Yeah. And, and I realised what a privilege it was just to be there and witness that, but also to record it so that other people could, could um, experience what I had mm. felt there at that particular moment in time. And in terms of the sort of technicalities of the image, what camera and lens were you using? Well, this was shot uh, with a, a Linhof 617S. It used roll film and it had a, a mounted um, large format lens on it. And um, with the, the sky just being a bit hot up there, you can see where the graduated filter, it was a 0.6 graduated filter that I had there. Yeah. It's just held that... Uh, luminosity in the sky back so that there's a lovely balance between the foreground, the midground and the yeah. background. So would the point of gradation be somewhere around these clouds here? Yes, that's right. I mean, with the 617 camera, it was always uh, critical where you placed uh, the graduated filter because unlike a DSLR, you couldn't see through the lens. Mm. So it, it, it was just experience that allowed you to know where to put the grad exactly. So how much of a challenge was it to actually get to this point where you're making a picture like this? Yes, this, this was um, sunset and in many ways sunset images are, are, are shot, shots at dusk are actually easier to achieve because you can walk up during the day, mm. but you can linger there until the sun goes through uh, that phase that you want it to, that orangey, reddy, yeah. even purpley yeah. uh, hue. It's something that, that, you know, drives me up these mountains day and night. Yeah. So the first image we spoke about was shot in 1990. This one brings us up a little bit more recently to 2009 looks like it might have a quite interesting story behind it. Tell us a bit about it. Well, it's a bit breezy, as you can see. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, it was a full-blown tempest, um, and I was on a small icebreaker. As we neared the coast of East Greenland, uh, we came upon this huge tabular iceberg, and um, it was taking the full force mm. of this tempest uh, onto the face of it. And these waves, which you yeah. can see here, they were rolling vertically along the face of the iceberg. It was just the most spectacular moment. And uh, I was shooting this with a, a digital Hasselblad camera. And uh, I was forced, uh, because of the lack of light, to uprate the ISO to 800. Notwithstanding that, it produced a great result. And as you can see, the sky was pretty grey and featureless. And Again, I had a 0.6 grad in there okay. just to 
to try and, and add um, a bit of relief in the yeah. sky there. Because are these, are these mountains here? Yes, they behind are. It. So um, that, you, that, you that, needed to bring out in that incredibly subtle detail, really, didn't you? Yourself? Yeah, the sky was almost that white way, so I needed to try and get some density uh, in the sky, and the grad worked really well there. And when you've got a straight line like that, as yeah. you can see, it's just a perfect edge to mm. um, drop the gradation onto. So would that have been a hard grad? No, that was a, soft, was a grad. soft grad. I, I don't like too dramatic skies, um, and I feel that good filtration is invisible filtration. Yeah. Having something that was so, a solid mass in, in the sea there gave you um, something uh, against which you could really see the state of the sea. You're thinking about the message, you're thinking about the technicalities such as the, the grad and the lens you're using and presumably after a number of years that all becomes second nature. It does, that, that, that's the, <clears throat> the craft part of photography which is reasonably straightforward to learn and um, the hard bits is, is, the, is the artistic side, mm. it's the composition. You've got to let images, you've got to mm. feel them in your heart mm. and then you've got to have the technical skill and ability to get what you're feeling in your heart into a two-dimensional medium that uh, sums up what you saw and felt at that moment. So this is our third image that we're going to talk about and it brings us up to the present day and I think um, it's fair to say this is a, a project that's consumed you, would that be fair to say? <laughs> yes, um, both mentally and physically I think. But the, the, the Karakoram is a, is a group of mountains in Pakistan as you know Wales are. I'd always made my mind up that I wanted to create a body of work here, an authoritative body of work, to photograph them in a way that hasn't been done before. There are four 8,000 metre peaks in a relatively small uh, region of the Karakoram, but it's, it's really the shapes of mm. the mountains there. You've got these minarets and towers and cathedrals, mm. and you know, there's mountains also that look like pyramids. This image in particular was shot from a campsite called Urdicus, and it's probably got one of the best viewpoints in the world. And in that particular morning, you can see there was quite a lot of cloud about, but it's dissipated. Yeah. And just for about five minutes, we had some light that came uh, through from the east and the cloud um, just opened up uh, on the west. And technically, is it a difficult place to photograph? Yes, indeed. And as you can see, uh, this is a black and white image. And um, I've decided that the, the forthcoming book will, uh, will be completely black and white. So you can see here, you've got snow on the shoulders, but it's largely fallen off these vertical faces. And for a photographer, this is what makes it so exciting. You've yeah. got this contrast between um, some snow there and for black and white images, it's mm. really superb. And so do you, do you find that you need filters when you're working in the Karakoram? Is it different in that way from maybe shooting in Scotland or somewhere else? It's not dissimilar. I mean, there's the ch same changing weather patterns and I'm using grads here on, on a pretty regular basis. I imagine when you're working in such an epic landscape as this, is there a temptation to sort of include as much as you possibly can? I suppose what I'm asking is how do you distill it down to what we see here within the boundaries of this frame? I think, I think the key to all good landscape photography is uh, in, in thinking about the subject in a subtractive way. And you can see uh, in this composition, I've used a 70 to 200 millimeter Canon lens and I've, I've distilled the, the essence, if you like, of um, this mountain mass. It's, as you can see, it's quite complex, mm. but we've got this lovely uh, tonality through it. There's a wide range of tonal um, features uh, in the photograph and there's also this lovely blend of light and shadow. Mm. It's an incredible um, structure, uh, this, and, and it's, it's about focusing on the key elements of it. Had we shot a wider image of this, this, this wouldn't have the same visual impact, no. but just look at the different angles and shapes mm. that are existing there. And where else would you find this? Um, there's few other mountain ranges in the world that have got this structure um, an inspiring nature. Mm. Uh, the Karakoram for me has it all.